All right, I want to follow up on something I mentioned yesterday because I had a couple emails, so I did some a lot more in-depth research, which I should have done prior to making the statement. But on the FHA loans, first of all, that happened in 2013. I thought it was just a couple years ago. Time flies when you're having fun. But the private mortgage insurance will never come off an FHA loan if you put less than 10% down. If you put more than 10% down, uh, the monthly PMI will come off in 11 years. Now, I, ha I don't know anybody that would ever have an FHA loan and put more than 10% down because typically you could go a whole different loan product and not get stuck with PMI. Uh, and that's why people use FHA is because it's a very low down payment, only three and a half percent minimum. So just let me clarify, your PMI never comes off if you only put the three and a half percent down. If you put more than 10% down, then it's 11 years, all right? <clears throat> all right, so chapter 14, this is the closing chapter. This is the chapter that we kind of culminate all of this together to kind of sum up what we've been talking about this whole time. Now, the closing day or the closing chapter is actually also called the settlement date. You hear it called the settlement date because that's when we settle up all our bills, all right? Now, you and I have a different name for it. What do we call it? Payday. This is payday, all right? So we earned our commission way back about a month ago, remember? But today is the day we actually collect it. Today is the settlement of this. Now, when we settle up, there are two sides to the settlement. There's the buyer side and the seller side. So let's talk about the buyer side first. What's the number one thing the buyer wants out of this transaction. This was the agreement that he's going to get what? The word is? His house. But not necessarily the house, because that's just the improvement. But what does he also want? Oh, he wants the title to make sure that he has ownership. He wants title, all right? And specifically, he wants clear title because that's what he asked for in the general warranty deed. So the buyer's number one goal is to gain clear title in this transaction. Now, to prove he's getting clear title, there on your book on page 256, he may receive a buttload of documents. All right, he's gonna get the loan, he's gonna get the mortgage, he signs all of those. He, he may look at the home inspection again. He may get the appraisal. He may get copies of rent, rental agreements. If he's buying a rental property, he may get receipts. Uh, he may get a whole plethora of documents to prove that he is in fact receiving clear title. Now, one of the things I just mentioned, I wanna go through is he may get receipts too, all right? Because when the seller runs the title work, they're going, maybe they might find there's a lien that the seller didn't know about. Well, the buyer, the seller says, okay, I'll go pay it off. So he goes and pays it off. The problem that we've discussed before is because of the human aspect of recording that payoff, it may not show up in time for the closing. So the buyer, the seller, or I'm sorry, the seller may show a receipt to the buyer saying, hey, here's proof I did pay it. It's not showed up in the recording yet, but here's the proof. When I listed a, a buddy of mine's house, he had a lien from American Express he didn't know about. It was like 1200 bucks. So we found out about four weeks before it closed. Well, Brent called their attorney, paid it off, did all of that. Unfortunately, it still showed up 
as a lien. So we called American Express, got their legal department to write a letter stating that in fact, Brent had paid that lien and it was being removed and was no longer on the property. So when we were at closing, the buyer said, hey, there's a lien here. And Brent showed him a receipt from the, le the letter from the attorney of American Express saying yeah, that that lien had been paid. So sometimes that buyer is going to get receipts from the seller for things like that as well, simply because of the time that they're, they can't get it recorded and show up quick enough. Everybody get that? Thumbs up. So these are all the things the buyer is going to be looking for. Now, the other thing the buyer is going to do, and as I mentioned just a minute ago, this is where I'm going tomorrow, is what they call the final walkthrough or the final inspection, all right? This is the buyer's last chance to walk through the property before closing to make sure that when the seller moved out, that the seller left everything that the buyer asked for in the purchase agreement, or that the seller took everything that the buyer said to take, and that there has been no material change in the property, because remember the last time the buyer looked at it could have been 30, 45 days ago. So the buyer does a final walkthrough to make sure that there's no damage to the property, the swing set is still there, they took the pool table, all of the stuff that we agreed upon in this purchase agreement. Now, I always advise my clients, which is what I'm doing tomorrow, we do the final walkthrough early in the morning, like 9 a.m. Our closing is tomorrow afternoon at four. So when we go at nine, we'll be done by 10, 10, 15. If there's something wrong, that time frame allows us to call the other agent and go, hey, we didn't see this, we saw this, there was damages here. So we have some time frame. You know, I'm not saying you shouldn't do it, but it's hard to do a walkthrough at three o'clock and close at four. Because if you find something wrong, you don't really have time to do anything. So I always try and tell my agents, if you can, schedule the morning of and close in the afternoon. That way you've got some time. <laughs> I had one several years ago where the house had a rick of wood behind the house and the house had no fireplace, had no chimney. So we asked the agent and the agent goes, oh, well, the sellers are campers and they take their wood with them when they go camping. And I'm like, well, that's cool. I get it. But our guys aren't campers. So we want the wood to be gone because in fact, it's a, a personal property. It should have been gone anyway, but we specifically stated that. We did the final walkthrough and the wood was still at the back of the house. So I called the other agent, I'm like, hey dude, the wood's still here. What are we gonna do with this? And he got snippy right out of the gate. He's like, well, it's just wood. Are your buyers not gonna close because of that? And this is the fun game of chicken you get to play. I'm like, I don't know. Are you guys willing to take the chance? Because if we don't close, guess what your sellers get to do? move back into the house that they've already moved out of. And I remember it was like January because the ground was frozen. And he's like, well, hold on a minute. And he slammed the phone down. You know, that's the problem with cell phones anymore. You can't like slam them down. <clears throat> it all sounds the same. So you can't hang up on anybody. So about 10 minutes later, I get a text that says, they'll move it. And about 10 minutes after that, here comes a pickup truck up in the lawn, drove around to the back, and the father and the son got out and threw the wood up in the back of the pickup, you know? And we're standing inside in the heat just laughing at them, and they were calling us every name under the book, you know? And it's not like we asked for something at the last minute when, oh, it was something we agreed on. Thank goodness at the closing, everything went fine, everybody was happy and joyous and no problems. 
But during that 20 minutes of them loading the wood and just pitching the wood in the back of the truck and drove off. So the walkthrough is designed to make sure the buyer, because once the buyer signs and owns the property, boop, now it's his house. I had one several years ago. The guy called me. We didn't go to the walkthrough. All right. So it's not a rule or it's not a law. It's just a good idea. And I've had people go with no problems. I've had people go and we've had problems. I've had people not go to a final walkthrough and it's been okay. Then occasionally you get one where they don't go to the walkthrough and there's a problem. Guy called me, couldn't go to the walkthrough because he was the plant foreman. And he's like, oh, I just can't get off. I can't do it. So we went to closing and we closed. He calls me about two hours later and said, hey, Raymond, the sellers took every light bulb in the house. Every one. The bathroom, the chandeliers, all of them. He's like, what can I do? I'm like, uh, go buy light bulbs. He's like, can I sue them? I'm like, well, sure. But in the meantime, you're still going to be living in the dark, so go buy light bulbs. So <laughs> about three weeks later, I get another phone call from him, and he's like, hey, dude, the court, small claims court case is tomorrow in Noblesville. I want you to come up and, you know, be one of my character witnesses or testify. I'm like, uh, no. All right. Now, remember, once the deal closed, agency was terminated. I no longer owe him obedience or loyalty, but I still owe accounting and confidentiality. This fell under neither one of those. So technically, I no longer owe him any agency relationship. And I said, no, I'm not, I'm not driving from Greenwood to Noblesville to sit in a small claims court over $262 you know, which you would have found if we'd have went to the closing walkthrough. Now, did I ever get a referral from him? Probably not, but legally I was, I did not owe him any obligations to go to this court case because our agency had terminated. So that is the final walkthrough. That's something the buyer does. Uh, the survey, the buyer's always probably will want the survey as well. Typically, the survey is required by the lender. So it's going to be a fee that he ends up paying somehow in the long run. So the buyer will probably end up wanting the survey. Now, so that's what the buyer wants. The buyer wants clear title. Now, we're going to jump over to page 259 and do the other side for a second. What does the seller want? This shouldn't be a hard one. The seller wants money. <laughs> money. money. He wants the money. Show me the money. All right. So typically, the Indiana Good Funds Law of 2009 now says that the buyer has to wire money into the title company if the buyer is bringing more than $10,000, all right? So there's a wire that will come into the title company from the buyer, and then there's a wire that comes in from the lender to the title company. And so when you walk into closing, virtually, the title company is holding all of the money. The only thing the title company doesn't have is this earnest money that the buyer gave the listing agent at the, at the time of the formation of the contract. So the listing agent will take the earnest money to the closing as well. So if you were one of my agents, you would come to me and go, hey, I got a closing tomorrow. That $5,000, I need it. And I would write a check to Chicago Title, not the seller or the buyer or you or them. 
it would go to the title company and then they would take the title the earnest money check from you as the listing agent and count that as a credit to the buyer and we'll talk about that today 